in our series of church history from Revelation 2 and 3. And today we look at the Philadelphian church. This word Philadelphia means brotherly love. And today we look at the great revival, the great missionary age. The age when the gospel again was carried into all the world. But before we do, let's go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Father, thank you for who you are, that you're the God of creation, the God that runs the universe, the God that holds it together by the word of your power. You know all things, Lord. You have purposed and planned. And you have given us responsibilities as human beings, as your children upon this earth. And Lord, at the heart of all that you ever will do is a cross upon which your Son died for the sins of men and all that you will ever do for men and saving them and using them and blessing them for now and all eternity is because of the cross. It is at the heart of all that you want. And Lord, press upon our lives the things that you want us to do with the message of the cross and the message of your word as we live in this world. And bless as we think today upon our duty to carry the gospel into all the world we pray. For it's in Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. Do you realize today, child of God, that you are a missionary? Now I know that most of you are not called to preach or teach or especially trained and educated in the Scriptures so that you have prepared yourself for some facet of full-time ministry. But you are a missionary. You are a child of God, born again by His grace and the work and person of Jesus Christ. And God has put you in this life where you work and where you live and where you're at with your abilities and your talents and your gifts. He's put you there to reach the world in which you live for Him. Our Lord had no rebuke to this age, this church at Philadelphia. Only Smyrna and here there was no rebuke. And I think there was no rebuke because this church saw what God wanted to do and let Him do it through them. 17, 1800s, there became an awareness in people's lives as they sought the will of God that they ought to carry the gospel into all the world. Hudson Taylor and, and, uh, went to China. Aaron Judson went to Burma. People went everywhere and churches supported it and men went and even where they were and lived, the gospel was given into the world in which they were at. And that is revival. And that is missions, and that is what God wants. That is what He wants of me and of you. Do you realize that the word missionary is not in the text of the Scriptures? It is not there. Only the word Christian is there. And Christians went everywhere telling the message from Jerusalem. That's how the church got started. And that's how the church spreads. And that's God's will for you and for me. It was His will for this age. And they saw it and did it. And Christ was pleased with their work and with their lives. 
Evangelism is a thermometer to gauge the closeness, to gauge the intensity of the work of Christ in my life and yours, in the life of any age at any time. And here is the gauge. They went everywhere preaching the word. They carried the gospel into the, all the world. And we have seen that happen. And we may still be in the edge of the Philadelphian church. It seems that we've crossed over into a, a different age now. Missionaries are still being sent, though missionaries tell us back home that the doors are closing in many places in this earth. Something else has happened. People think only missionaries are those that are sent to a foreign land and depend on God's people to support them financially, that, that they're able to carry the gospel. And we've lost the sight of the fact of what they knew here and what the Word of God clearly teaches, that all of us are ambassadors for Christ. All of us are our representatives here. And we see that we should fund the work of missions, and that's true, we should do that. When we can't go over there, we help send somebody over there where the gospel's needed. But watch your evening news and read your newspaper and listen to the conversation at the office where you work and tell me that the gospel and the word of God is not needed here where you're at in America today. And God has left you here to give it. Maybe to just had to try. Maybe to share what you did when you trusted Jesus Christ. Certainly to pray for those that are lost around you. To invite them to services where they can hear the truth and the Holy Spirit can work into their lives. You're a missionary. They were missionaries here. And how can we do the work of missions in our life? How can we be missionaries where we live? We can do that by seeing the opportunities God has put before us. In verse 7, Christ pictures himself to this church as the ones that has the keys of David, the keys of authority that opens and no man can shut and shuts and no man can open. God opens the doors of any ministry that we ever do. If we do something without him, it the world may think it's good and successful, but he will not. But I think in every one of our lives, God knows what he wants us to do. He has a plan for us. We may not fulfill that plan by carelessness and sinfulness and concentrating on what we want in our lives. We never know a lot of his plan, perhaps. But He will show it to you if you will let Him. For He is the sovereign God of the universe that opens and shuts the doors of opportunity. And He said about this church in this age that He had put before them an open door and no man could shut it and that they had a little strength. And they were going through the door. There's never been a day like the day in which we live with all its technology and ability. We can reach every part of the world from our home through the internet. The world is closer together than it's ever been. They didn't have the TV here. They didn't have the internet here. They didn't have the phone system we have here. They didn't have the faxes and the emails that we have here. They didn't have the machinery and the capabilities to print and produce materials like we do today. They didn't have the economic uh, uh, stability, though, the beginning of the uh, industrial age began and helped uh, 
to push some of this thing into all the world. But now we live in such days of prosperity and, and riches and what opportunities we had even that they didn't have here. Opportunities. God is set before you a door in your personal life. And you must go through it. And we limit God. Remember it is the God that Stepped out on the edge of nothing and by a word of His power created everything. It is that God that has a purpose for you and me to be a witness in this world. And the power and the ability is not in our ability to tell. It's in the person of Jesus that lives through us and in us and in His Spirit is as we tell the message in our all, in our stammering, incomplete tongue. The Lord takes that message if the message is the message of His Word and does His work. We limit God. We think that serving Christ is two or three or four things. But the God of the universe that has all power is the God that wants to use my life and yours if we will let Him. No, He doesn't paint the house all in one day. Nor does he complete a life all in one day. And sometimes the trim work takes the longest when you paint. And God's finishing touches on our life may take a lifetime. But that's what we have. And what is your life all about, child of God? Do you know that you are not here Primarily for yourself, for your families, or for your friends. You're not here just to earn money. You're not here to enjoy the goodness of God's world. You are here to be a witness for Jesus Christ. An opportunity to find Him and to serve Him. And all eternity will be based on what you do here. And at the heart of a God... And all that He wants to do is His gospel. And what will you do with His gospel while you are here? What opportunities we have. Do you see them? Do you know the door is open? Will you go through it today? And then, if we're to be missionaries for Christ, we need to love the things that God loves. And here in verse 9, he says something that, that perhaps you won't find a lot of other places. It, it, it is a, a rare thing what he says here. Though we know that God loved us because of what he did for us. Notice what he says here in verse 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, who say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and know that I have loved thee. The Lord says that He is going to make the world through the work of the Christian in this age, He is going to make the world realize that He loves His children who are carrying the gospel into all the world. God gives a testimony of His love for His children. He loves you today. There is no doubt about that. The cross proves that. He loves you today with a supreme love. He did everything. He paid the greatest price, your hell. All that the penalty of your sin required, He loves you. If you love Him, you'll love the things that He loves. You'll never find a grandparent that loves that grandchild that isn't interested in the things that the grandchild does. He may not love sports, but if his little grandson is playing ball, he suddenly becomes a fan of sports. He's interested in what his grandchild is doing. And a lot of husbands who love their wives suddenly become interested in shopping. Can you imagine that? that they would go without uh, intending to buy anything special. And because they're with the one that they love and adore, it is a joy in their heart to do that, to go shopping. If 
we love Jesus, we will love the things that he loves. And Jesus said, I come to seek and to save those that are lost. It is so right for us to do many things. But if we are not carrying the message of the cross into this world, if we are not trying to promote it, if we are not involved in it, if that is not at the center of all our purposes of doing, then we don't love the Lord as we ought to love it and we're not interested in the things that He's interested in. No, I think to do what this age did to do what God wants in our lives. We need to love Him and let Him live through our lives. Let His power and His love so dominate our life that that can shine forth. And be the energy in all that we do. And then, finally, if we're going to be missionaries, for our Lord, <coughs> we need, need, need to make the Bible the uh, authority of your life. Someone has said that sin will keep you from this book, and this book will keep you from sin. And all that God has wanted us to know. And child of God, if you will read this book, and especially the New Testament, which is God's instruction to us in this church age, if you will read this book and let the Lord speak to your heart, you will be convinced of what God wants you to do about carrying His message into this world. You cannot miss it. It's there. It's so plain. It's so clear. This book, make it the authority of your life. This book will bring you to your Lord and His will to live His life in you and through you. It will teach you how to live the Christian life. It will cause you to be sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. This book. So we could just ask the question, how much time do we spend in this book? And because we spend time in this book, how much time do we spend being missionaries into the world in which we live? Carrying the gospel to people, praying for people that are lost, trying to help people understand God's will and, and, and getting the information of this book into their lives. And Christ said about this church that they had kept his word. And in verse 10, he says, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Here is a special promise that the Lord is going to keep. Uh, Christians like this, at the end of the age, he is going to keep them. From the tribulational period. What a marvelous thing that is. That Christians that have the spirit of, of missionaries that are doing what God wants to be done. They are the ones. And of course when the rapture occurs, I believe that God will take all of his children. But here is a special promise that... If you're faithful in missions, you're going to be part of my bride when I come back and, and take the saved ones from this earth. And the, the honor and the responsibility here that God promises to those that hear, to all of His children who are overcomers, that we're going to be involved in, in important places. We're going to be pillars in the temple of God. And we're going to know the blessings of God upon our life. I see two things here. I see the fact that keeping the word of God requires us to live by faith.
You cannot do what God wants you to do. Oh, you can do some of the things, but if you do those things that God wants you to do in your own abilities, they perish. Only what God energizes through His Spirit and through those that trust in Him. Remember He said, if whatsoever is not of faith is of sin. And if we live our lives through any other motivation, maybe it's that we be honored, maybe it's out of sense of duty, that we realize that we ought to do these things, maybe it's out of a sense of fear that God will somehow strike us down if we fail to do what He wants us to do. But none of those things produce what God wants. Keeping His Word involves living by faith. It involves trusting in what God is saying and trusting in the God of this Word, His character. What this book says He is and does and wants. And oh, how our life can be contrasted in one of two ways. We either grab the steering wheel of life and try to put in our lives what we think ought to be there religiously or selfishly or otherwise. You can live like that. You can look at circumstances. You can see what you want to do or what you think God wants you to do. And you can try by your decision and choosing and working to put that there. Or you can trust in the God of the Bible. And give your life to Him and say, Lord, I know that you must live through me. And I don't know what ought to be in tomorrow, both good and bad. I don't know what pain you want to put there to teach me. I don't know what opportunity will be there. I don't know what opposition will be there. I don't know the problems nor the blessings. But I give it to you and I depend on you to work in my life what you want. And that is living by faith. And that is keeping the Word of God. And we must do that. And keeping His Word means sharing His Word. And He said to those twelve disciples, Go you into all the world and preach the Gospel. And we believe that He gave it to them, but not just to them, but to us too. And here's not something that just the people down at your church should do and not you. Here's not something that those that are called especially to go yonder and prepare to, to carry the gospel into another culture and another language are to do. Here's not something just that the preacher is to do or the officials of the church or the deacons are to do. But sharing the Word of God is something that God wants you to do. He said to you and to me that we are to go into the world in which we live and take the Gospel with us. And when we do that, God will be pleased with our lives if we go with His Spirit and His power and the person of His Son and the message that He gave in this book. It will transform your life. And why would you not do it? Why would you not say, here is something that is going to last for all eternity. Here is something that is going to produce good forever. Here is something that I can do in the talents and abilities that God has given me in the ways that God directs me. God doesn't expect you to be somebody else. He expects you to do with what He's purposed for you. And why would you not do it today, child of God? You say, I'm too busy. How can that be that something that you want is more important than what Jesus wants? You can say, I just really don't want to. Then I would say to you, it's obvious that we do not love the Lord as we are, as He loves us. We're not interested in what He's interested in. 
you say, like Moses, I just can't do it. Then I say, are we saying that what God wants, He wants supply through the power of the Spirit and the person of His Son to accomplish? Obviously, we can't do it. But He can do it for us. God always asks, uh, well, not always, but often He asks people to do things that are possible to do. He said to the man who had been there by the pool of Bethesda for years, he said, uh, take up your bed and walk. And as the man, through faith, believed the words of Christ, Christ did the work in his body and he was able to walk. Now, I'm not a charismatic and I don't believe in the gift of healing today but I, that a person has that. But I believe that God can do anything that He purposes to do. And I believe that God has called every one of us to do this work. And I believe that we have no excuse. We have no reason. Why, I ask you today, why aren't you doing this? Carrying the gospel into the world in which you live. Why isn't this among the most important things that you do? It was so huge. And by God's grace, by His help, by the person of His Son and the Spirit that lives within our hearts, by the Word of God, which we believe and carry for, it can be done. May God give us grace to do what I pray. Amen.